Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's look at a graph problem actually, it's called course schedule. We're given a total number of courses and these are our nodes and they're labeled from zero to n minus one basically. So some courses have prerequisites. For example, if you wanna take course zero, you have to first take course one and that's represented as a pair or as an edge in our graph. So if you wanna take course zero, you have to first take course one. And the only question we wanna answer is, is it possible for us to finish every course? So let's just look at the first example. We're given number of courses are two, so that means we have one course zero and another course one. We know that the prerequisites are like this, meaning that if we wanna take course one, we have to first take course zero, and I'm gonna represent it as an edge going outward from one into zero. So what do they mean by possible? Let's just run through each of our courses and see is it possible to take each one. So for zero, is it possible to take zero? Well, we don't have any outward edges from zero, so that means zero does not have any prerequisites. So it is possible for us to complete course zero. Then we look at course one. It has one prerequisite, which is zero. And we know zero is possible to complete. So once we finish course zero, then we're allowed to take course one, which has no other prerequisites, right? The only prerequisite was course zero. So therefore, both of these courses are possible to complete so we can return true. So let's look at an example where it's actually impossible. So we're given n equals two, that means we have two courses, zero and one, and we're given two prerequisites, so one zero and zero one. This one means that if we wanna finish course one, we have to first complete course zero. So zero is a prerequisite. The second one means that if we wanna finish course zero, we have to finish course one first, so one is a prerequisite of zero. So the problem with this is kind of obvious, right? There's a cycle. So we, if we wanna finish course zero, we gotta go finish course one. If we wanna finish course one, we gotta finish course zero, and it just goes like that forever. So neither of the courses are possible to finish. So in this case, we return false. So we can actually solve this problem using depth first search. We can also use breadth first search, and I'm gonna show you just the depth for search version because I like it better. So given this new example, the first thing you wanna do is visualize it. So I'm gonna draw a picture. So we're given five nodes. So we have zero, one, two, three, four. That's five nodes. We're also given five prerequisites. So in this case, we end up having five edges, right? From zero to one, zero to two, one to three, one to four, and three to four. So my goal here is for each of these nodes, I just want to know, right, for each of these classes, can we complete this course or not? And how do we know if a course can be completed? Well, just looking at this picture, it's obvious, right? Zero has a prerequisite of two, but two does not have any prerequisites, which is great. It also has a prerequisite of one, and one has two prerequisites, three and four. Three has one prerequisite of four, and four, luckily for us, does not have any prerequisites. So looking at this, it's kind of obvious that we can complete all these courses. So let's do the algorithm to be able to determine that. We see that these are kind of our base cases, right? Two and four don't have any prerequisites. That's useful information, but we don't need a graph to tell us that. We can use a data structure called an adjacency list, and I'm gonna call it prerequisite map because the, what the data structure I'm gonna use is a hash map to represent this. So for each of our courses, we are gonna have a list of all of its prerequisites. So for zero, we know zero has two prerequisites, one and two. And we're gonna repeat that for every single course. So for one, we know that two does not have any prerequisites, so we can just put an empty list over here. Four also does not have any prerequisites, so we get another empty list. So now we're gonna run depth first search on every single node, I'm gonna do it in the order from zero to n minus one. So 
be starting at zero, so we're gonna run depth first search on it, right? How are we gonna do the depth first search? Well, we have our prerequisite map, so we're gonna do it recursively. We see that it has two prerequisites, one and two. So now let's run depth first search on the first neighbor one. So now we look at one, we see that it has two neighbors, three and four. So let's recursively run depth first search on its first neighbor three. So since three is a prerequisite of one, now we want to know if we can take, we can complete course three. So we look at its prerequisites. It only has one, four. So now we're going to check its only prerequisite four. Can we complete course four? And then we want to look at the prerequisites of course four, which we know are empty. This is good, right? So now we see that this is empty. So what does that tell us? That tells us course four can be completed, which we basically already knew because course four has an empty, uh, empty prerequisite list. So I'm just going to put a little check mark here to say that we know course four can be completed. And so recursively, we're going to end up going back to our three and we see that it only had one prerequisite and we were able to complete that prerequisite four. So therefore, three is also a, a course that can be completed. And so what we can actually do is from its prerequisite list, we see four, we can just remove the four. We know it can be completed. And so I'm representing that by having an empty list here, right? Just an empty list means that it has no prerequisites, therefore it can be completed. So I removed the only prerequisite that three had. Then from three, we can actually go backwards to one, which we see here. We can kind of get rid of this three because we know three can be completed. And then from the three, we're going to end up going to four to check again if four can be completed because it is a prerequisite of one. And since we already know four can be completed, we can get rid of that as well. So now we know for sure that one can also be completed. And now I'm going to go back to zero, which is where we, how we even got to one in the first place. And we look at the prerequisites of zero. We see one is no longer a prerequisite because we basically know that one can be completed, but we still have to look at this too. So then we're going to go to the last unvisited node in our entire graph, which is two. So now we've gotten to the last course two we see it's an empty list, right? Therefore, two can be completed. It has no neighbors. It has no prerequisites. So I can put a little check mark here. Two can be completed. And then we can finally go back to our original node, zero, cross out its last prerequisite, which was two. And now when we look at zero, even zero has an empty list of prerequisites. Therefore, we know zero can be completed. So since we were able to complete every single course, that, that means we can return true. Every course is completable. And the time complexity for this is going to be big O, the number of, of nodes we have, which is N. I'll use N as that. And I'll use P for the number of prerequisites that we had. Because if you notice in this graph, we have to, we have to visit every single node and we have to visit and we have to move along every single edge. And once we get rid of the prerequisites from here, we don't really have to visit a course twice because once we know it can be completed, we, we can instantly do that. We don't have to go through its prerequisites twice. So I'm going to show you one last example. This is the example that what we're going to do, how are we actually going to detect this loop? Because we see, so I'm just going to cross this stuff out because we're looking at a different example. But here we see that zero has a prerequisite of one, one has a prereq of two, two has a prereq of three. So this is a loop. We cannot complete these courses, but how can we actually, how can we actually detect this loop? I'm going to show you how really quickly. So to detect a loop, I'm going to use one last data structure and it's going to be a set. 
though I think you could just use an array if you want. I'm gonna call it the visit set. And all it's gonna contain is the list of courses that we're currently visiting along our depth first search. So let's say we start at zero, then we add zero to our visit set. We take a look at the prerequisites of zero. We see it has one prerequisite. So then we move to one. So now we visit one. So we're gonna add one to our visit set and we look at the prerequisites of one. It has one prerequisite two. So then we move to two. We run depth for search on two. So to do that, we have to first visit two. So two is also gonna be added to our visit set. And lastly, we see two has one prerequisite of zero. So then we of course wanna visit zero. And so now we're gonna visit zero twice, but you see that zero is already in the visit set. Therefore, we detected a loop. Therefore, we have to return false. These courses cannot be completed. So now let's finally look at the code. So the first thing I wanna do is create our pre-map so our list of prerequisites. So we know for each course, initially we can set it to an empty list. So an empty list of prerequisites. And we wanna do that for every course that we got, which the number of that is just number of courses. So this is, if you're not familiar, this is some Python stuff. I'm just saying that for every course, initially we wanna map it to an empty list. And we know that the prerequisites are actually contained in this nested list variable. So let's iterate through that, let's get each course prerequisite pair from that list and then just start appending them so pre-map of course we want to append to this list this prerequisite so we also want a visit set which is going to ha store the it's going to store all the courses along the current depth first search path and of course it's initially just going to be empty so since we're going to do this recursively i'm going to define a nested function depth first search inside of our can finish function because then we'll have access to all these variables without having to pass them in as a parameter the only parameter that we have to pass in is the current course that we're visiting and so like most recursive functions we want to look at our base cases first the first base case is if course is in the visit set already. So what this means is that we're visiting a course twice. So we detected a loop so we can return false, meaning that this course cannot be completed. The other base case we know is if the prerequisites of this course happen to be an empty list. What that tells us is that this course has no prerequisites and we can return true because it can definitely be completed. If neither of these conditions sat is satisfied, then we can take this course and add it to our visit set because that means we are currently visiting this and we're gonna recursively run depth first search on its prerequisites. So I'm gonna loop through the prerequisites of this course. For each one, I'm gonna run depth first search on it so depth first search on this prerequisite. If it happens to return false though, then we know we can return false immediately. We don't have to wait because if we find one course that can't be completed, then we can return false for the entire function. So I forgot to put a not over here. So if not, meaning if it returns false, then we return false. But if this does not execute, that means it's a course that can be taken and we want to return true in that case. But before we return true, we wanna remove it from our visit set because we are no longer visiting this. We've already finished visiting it. So visit, remove this course. And also since we know this course can be visited, what we can do is say pre-map, we can set it to an empty list so that if, if we ever have to run depth first search on it again, we will in that case, execute this condition and return true immediately, we will not have to repeat all this work of running depth first search on its neighbors. So that's all for our depth first search function. The function is done. All we have to do is call it now, but we have to potentially call it for every single course in the number of courses that we have. And if any of them happen to return false, 
then we have to return false immediately. And if they don't return false, then we can return true. All courses can be completed. And the reason we are looping like this is mainly because what if our graph is not fully connected? Like what if we have a graph like this? One has a prerequisite of two and maybe three has a prerequisite of four. So these are two separate graphs that are not connected, right? So we have to we have to manually iterate through every course and check can one be completed, can two be completed, can three and can four be completed. So this is the depth first search solution. You can see that it does run very efficiently, about as efficiently as the breadth first search solution as well. And I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon.